I'm just wondering whether we'll go down in history as this is the inauguration of a new era when we uh, eradicate dirty money from Britain and everybody coming together. So hopefully in future years, the birth of this, uh, uh, the birth of this movement will be seen as being here. Can I, I'm really excited and I feel really energized actually by us all coming here together tonight and having got to this point where two um, all party parliamentary groups have come together and have launched a manifesto for action on economic crime. I want to thank people, I want to thank the Joffe Foundation who've uh, shown confidence in us, SIPFA who also have an Open Society Foundation and I think all of you, the confidence in what we're doing has really helped us professionalize and create this wonderful event in this amazing place this evening. Uh, there, this is a genuine cross party and a genuine backbench movement that you're witnessing tonight. We've all of us left our tribal politics outside the committee door and we have joined forces across the very the wider political spectrum to build a, con a, a consensus around all the actions that we believe should be taken now uh, by all of us working together. And I think on a day that has been difficult for politics today, what we're demonstrating is Parliament at its very best, with backbenchers working together, working in the national interest to tackle what is an urgent and deep-seated problem that has infected our country, our financial sector, and increasingly impacting on the public domain and on our politics. I just want to say a little bit of what brought us here. Fraud, economic crime, money laundering is a big, big problem. All the estimates are, are, are obviously subject to a, a bit of questioning, but £290 billion pounds each year lost in economic crime, that's more than a quarter of total public expenditure. And the NCA estimate that we've got £100 billion pounds being laundered into the UK each year, I think as well is a conservative with a little c estimate of what is actually taking place. And our reputation in Britain that has been earned through the generations, probably coming to these cloisters, uh, of being a trusted jurisdiction is being damaged. And we see that time and time again. Our security is being threatened. And we've seen that recently. Uh, with uh, the Russian oligarchs. Our citizens are being hurt, and we see that through the fraud, which is now affecting one in 11 of our citizens. Our public finances are being damaged, and we're in danger as a country of losing what I think is a really important moral compass, which has always given us status, credibility, and a position in the world. And it doesn't have to be like this, and I think that's our message from tonight. Uh, it's tragic that it's taken the war in Ukraine to bring the issue center stage, but I think we're determined to take advantage of this moment to try and start turning round the tanker. And our manifesto talks about action on four fronts, that we've got to pursue transparency. Uh, it's really important that we can follow the money. We have got to have smart regulation, not more regulation, but smart regulation that really works uh, and ensures that there is no place for dirty money in the UK economy. We need tough enforcement by our agencies so they really do take advantage of the powers that are there. And we need proper accountability to the British public through Parliament. And those four pillars run through the manifesto that we're putting forward. Research that has been published today by Tax Justice Network uh, looking at the, at the measures that we're proposing in our manifesto say that if we were to implement them all overnight, Britain would improve its position in the, on the, their financial secrecy index by 300%. And that is a massive change from just a set of pragmatic, doable actions. So tonight does demonstrate a partnership and a consensus and of what we want to achieve. It's a partnership and consensus among backbenchers. We want to achieve partnership and consensus with government, and we want to achieve 
partnership and consensus as well with all those working in the financial services sector who are impacted by the present situation and who could benefit by report. <coughs> so this is the start of a journey. Thank you all for coming. And thank you particularly to Damien Hines, who is the next speaker, for coming and joining us this evening. Thanks very much. Thank you.